core of Rene has always been Cartesian motion. The C channel, which is color-coded orange, moves horizontally with X clocks and vertically with Y clocks. So patch a clock to a clock input, here X clock, to begin sequencing. The X and Y axes each have a clock, mod, and CV input. Each of the three channels has its own CV and gate output. We'll patch C, CV to volt per octave on a VCO to hear this sequence. I've also patched the C gate output to open my VCA. Rene reads the location values for memory based on the currently selected state. If I change an OB's value, the sequence will change to correspond to it when that location is reached. This way we can program the knobs anew if we want, but if we don't do anything, the sequence plays from memory. Let's patch the clock to Y for vertical movement. Using both clock inputs at once unlocks the power of Cartesian sequencing, letting us move the axes at independent rates. Changing the timing relationship between these clocks gives us different paths through the location grid. But what about the other channels? Well, the X and Y clocks are also each associated with another channel. The X and Y channels are not Cartesian sequencers in the same style as the C channel, but rather they sequence in what we call snake patterns. Like on non-Cartesian sequencers, one clock moves the sequence through all 16 locations. But these channels also have a page called snake, which lets us choose from 16 different paths the sequence can take. The bottom eight locations on the snake page are the same eight patterns that might be familiar from the original Rene. The top eight patterns are new. The X and Y channels are independent of each other and of the Cartesian channel. They each have their own set of programming pages, inputs, and outputs. The Cartesian channel shares inputs with the X and Y channel, but has its own output and motion style. three channels are always available simultaneously.